Hello guys and welcome to a new episode in the how to make an FPS in Unity tutorial series. Today's episode we're going to be adding our first enemy as well as making our health bar work. So with that said, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a health script. So we can right click in our script folder and we can create a C sharp script. And let's call this player health. Uh, to be honest I should have done this <laughs> last time. But uh, I pushed it to today, um, so yeah. Uh, but basically, what this health script will do is that it'll control our health bar that we created in the last episode, um, as well as yeah, just making everything work. Um, and basically, um, after that, we'll add an enemy. Since this is a survival FPS, I think it's better to add some like low poly uh, monsters, like slimes or something, or maybe spiders. Um, but yeah. If you guys want different enemies, you guys can let me know in the comments below. So, yeah, so we're just gonna delete these two functions and we're just gonna reference. So, first we need the UI, so we're gonna say using Unity Engine dot UI. And we have to say here, we have to say, uh, um, what was it called? <laughs> it is called public uh, slider slider. So, we're gonna reference the slider that we made last time and we're gonna create two ints. Or float so we're gonna create a float for max health and this will dictate our maximum amount of public uh, possible health and our next float will be current health and current health will obviously represent our current health so on void start what we're gonna say is cur health is equal to max health and then we're gonna create a new function uh update I don't know why I just typed that public void update health um, and then what we're gonna say is we're gonna say slider dot also at the very start we have to say slider dot max value is equal to max health. And then over here we're just gonna say slider dot value is equal to cur health. So yeah, and basically what we can do actually you know what? Yeah, that's pretty much it. We just have to call this function here and now when we play our health bar will be automatically at hundred percent. Yay. So let's just drag this in into our player. Um, as you can see here, we dragged it in. Also, we have to reference the slider. I don't know why it's not showing up. Uh, okay, that's strange. Yeah, everything. Why is why is the slider not showing up? I'm so confused. Yeah, the, the slider is not showing up. Okay, um, in the inspector, I think this Unity broken. Okay, right, you know what? I'm going to try to fix this. Uh, so public slider slider public. Yeah, none of the variables are showing up. I don't know why. Um, let's create like a public string. Show up. Um, and then let's try to fix to see if it shows up. There we go, okay, so it just needed a, I don't know why that wasn't showing up. Maybe it didn't compile correctly. Okay, but yeah. Okay, so now we can set the max out to be 100. Also, we can remove this from the plane that we already did. And then obviously the slider is going to be in our canvas and part of our health bar. So now, before if you press play, your health bar will always stay at zero. But now when you press play, your health bar value will be at 100. That's great. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be adding an enemy. So first I'm just going to go into the asset store and I'm just going to look for an enemy asset. All right, so I found an asset that is very good. It's called the Mesh in Free Polygonal Metalon. Um, and I'll leave a link in the description below for this specific asset if you want to use it. If you don't, you can add any other asset you want um, and you can customize it with the video. So I'm just going to download this asset, it shouldn't take too long, it's a pretty small file. And then we're just going to import it into our folder. Um, importing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So now we can go into here and we can just drag in our first enemy. Now there's like a red one, a green one, and a blue one. So, or a purple one, sorry my bad. The red one, a green one, and a purple one. Uh, 
I'm going to drag in the green one because I feel like no, actually no. Hold up, yeah, I feel like the red one would be the weakest in my opinion. So okay, so I'm just gonna drag in the red one. And now we're just gonna press play, and you can see our friend. He's in the idle position. Um, so yeah, this is going to be our first enemy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn directional like this way so you can see better um and also just make this yeah i think that's good never mind um yeah so i'm just going to unpack this prefab and then i'm going to rename this to uh enemy lighter 01 and this will be kind of like the weaker enemy and we can See, where is the animation? Okay, there it is. There's the animation. Okay, so if you go into Animator Controller, there is a lot of options, and you can just look at each one of these animations uh, by clicking on this guy. And you can like see the take damage animation by pressing play. You can see it take damage. Um, and yeah, so originally I was thinking we could make a state machine uh, for the enemy, but I think we'll leave that for later episodes. Um, yeah, jump in place, okay. So yeah, uh, the only animations we're going to be using is idle, and then die, after obviously it dies, and run forward, and the reason we're not using walk forward is because our enemy isn't really going to be walking, so, um, and then stab, that's the only animation those are the only animations that we're going to be using so we can say goodbye to every other animation if you want to use them you're welcome to obviously um, but I'm just going to delete all of these so, okay. you want to make sure that you're used choosing the run forward in place not the run forward with root because that will actually move your enemy and we don't want it to move our enemy Smash attack. Yep. Drag this closer. And then this can go away as well. Take damage. We don't need take damage. So, yeah, the only things you should have is run, stab, and die. And idle. Where's idle? Oh, there it is. Idle. Yep. Okay, so we can delete walk forward. As well as deleting walk backward, strafe right, strafe left. Uh, we need to keep run forward. Delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this. Okay, so yeah. Um, I'm just going to rename this to be run. And I'm also going to rename this to be attack. This is easier for us to edit. And then we can come here and you can see, yep, if run is true, then we're going to start running. And if run is false, not run. And yeah, so, okay, so I'm going to make, turn this, yeah, okay, so it's, it should be a trigger, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that, that works. And die is obviously from any state, because when you die, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're just gonna die. So yeah, you can't transition to anything else after you die. So that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, now we can start editing. Actually, before that, what I want to do is I want to give this guy a health bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to right click and create a slider, just like our own, and we can call this health bar. And then we can go to the canvas and we can change this from screen space overlay to world space. And we can set the scale to be like 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. And then center it. And then we can go up to it. And I think that's a bit too small. So we can make the health bar bigger by making this 2 by 2 by 2. And then yeah. Now we can just edit this health bar to look how you want. I'm going to make it red. You can make it whatever whatever you guys want. Um, so it's red. Disable the handle area. 
and just take the fill area, like black or something, or gray. Okay, cool. And then obviously we need to edit this, so I'm going to make this health bar zero. Wait, what? Oh, whoops. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so this should be gray and this should be red. I made a mistake. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's set this to be zero and then we're gonna make the field area. Let's say that big. And then yeah, that looks pretty good. So now if we press play, you can see our guy has a little health bar over his head. Yep, yeah, so he has a little health bar over his head. And yeah, um, another thing I want to do is I want to add a. Actually, no, we'll add that in the last, next episode. Um, yeah. Okay, so now what we can do is we can add fake some nav mesh. So. Okay, so I just picked the nav mesh. Um, yeah, um, now see here our entire plane is coated with this blue substance that allows our enemy to walk along so I'm going to go into the inspector and add what's called a nav mesh agent so that it can actually navigate around and I'm also going to add capsule collider so our player cannot just walk through it so I'm just going to make this like two or five or no let's make this one and I'm going to make this a bit longer, so slightly longer by uh, two, three or two. And I'm going to make the height like, yeah, actually no, that, that's good. Um, slightly big. Okay, yeah, there we go. Anyways, I think that's good. Yeah, so now you can see here if we press play. We can't collide with our enemy anymore. So yeah, um, we should also add a crosshair so it's easier to aim, but we'll add that later. Um, so yeah, I'm going to now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a script so that our enemy can actually follow us. So if we go into our scripts folder and create a C sharp script, say uh, enemy spider 01. And we can create a folder for every single enemy. So, because we're probably going to have around five or six enemies in their game in total. Um, so yeah. So we can also we have a null reference. I don't know why we didn't really import anything into our game. So yeah. Um, we can just delete these and we can say pub private. So first we have to reference using Unity. Unity engine AI, and then we can say public um, nav mesh agent nm, and then on void start we can say nm is equal to find object of type or get component nav mesh. And yeah, basically what this does is that it looks inside of our game object to see what for our nav mesh agent reference. Um, so yeah, once we have that down, we can say and go down and say uh, void update distance or var distance is going to be equal to vector three dot distance, and it's going to be between our transform dot position and our so we need to have a private uh, player or uh, transform player and our player will be um, player is equal to find object of type player health dot game objects dot transform so the reason we're doing this is because uh, when we spawn in our object we can't actually set our player like manually because it's going to be spawned in and we can't set in the prefab so what we have to do is we have to just look for a reference for it in the scene with find object of type so yeah so we're just going to set it as transferring the position and player uh dot position sorry all right there we go 
So now we can say if, basically this, by the way, if you don't know what this is, vector three dot distance, it basically returns a float in the form of a distance in meters between two objects. And in this case, it's our enemy and our player. So now what we can say is we can say if distance is less than or equal to 30, then our player will follow you. And he will um, say, well, let's go say, uh, adam dot target dot destination, sorry, is going to be equal to uh, our player. I think, no, it's equal to, okay. I haven't used an act mesh in so long. Player dot position. There we go. Okay, so. And yeah, basically that's it. Um, and what we can do is actually we can create another reference for our animator. And we can say uh, anim.set will run to be true. And else run should be false. Okay. This should work now. Um, so if we attach this script to our enemy spider and we we drag in our animator from this guy and we don't need to attach a nav mesh because we'll automatically find it once the scene starts. You can see our enemy will start following us. Cool. It's actually faster than us, which is pretty <laughs> unnerving. Um, so I'm just going to turn down this guy, or I'll turn up our speed because I think we're slightly too slow. Um, let's make her forward speed like 10, 15. And our enemy spider spot stopping distance will be, let's say three. So once it gets within three meters of us, the enemy spider should stop. So you can see here. Yep, that is following us. And you can see here, if I get too far away from it, it should stop. Nope, it did not stop. Okay, I need to try to, I fell off, okay. <laughs> but yeah, you get the idea now. The enemy will follow you. Um, and yeah, basically that's pretty much it for this episode. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Um, and yeah, in the next episode, we're going to be creating HEDs, like a crosshair and maybe some like inventory, like, like the slotting um, UI as well as making like bullet impacts. So we're just gonna be doing some like minor changes and fixes in the next episode. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.